Hello and welcome to a special edition episode of The Doug Geyser Show, brought to you by the Ashton University Journalism and Digital Media Department. I'm Cade Krakis, and as usual, I'm joined by the head coach of the Eagle football team, Doug Geyser. Coach, first and foremost, thanks so much for joining me here today. I appreciate the invite. Thank you. Obviously, today's episode is going to be centered around signing day and the recruits you guys are bringing in. But first and foremost, let's take a deep dive back and take a look at the 2023 season. Mind mm. giving a quick recap? Yeah, we, every season we look at it as a journey. It's a learning experience for us. And as everybody knows, we kind of stubbed our toe right out of the chute. We're 0-2, we're 1-3. But the guys, in the process of learning how to finish games, they stuck together. And that was the most important thing, that bond we had. As a result, we are able to finish the season strong with eight straight victories. Finish with a record of 9-3. and three, And that's only been done 13 other times in school history. So it's a very exclusive group to be a part of. I'm proud of the guys and the way they rallied with the cause. You know, it's not our ultimate goal to go to a bowl game, which we went to a bowl game for the first time in school history. Had the first bowl win and the first GMAC win in that bowl game. But it's a good first start as we build to hopefully, you know, get a chance to win the conference next year and you know, go back to the playoffs. And obviously all season long, we took a look at some big standouts on the stat sheet in terms and whatnot. When you take a look at those players, a lot of them were seniors. Is that going to impact you guys? And how are you guys looking to replace those players? As you look on the offensive side of the ball, we had some guys that really stepped up and probably played the best football of their career. We got a graduate transfer by the name of Desmond Libertas. Des had a tremendous year, led the league in all receiving categories and kickoff returns. Hard guy to replace. You look up front, Nehemiah Cannon's a three-year starter on the offensive line, a three-year all-league player, hard guy to replace. You look at the running back room, Larry Martin and Gio Washington, nice little one-two punch right there. Guys that are very, very high in the all-time you know, rushing list on the school history. So you, you gotta replace those guys if you can. But then you also have some unsung hero guys, guys that stepped into major roles and really contributed. Ryan Poole up front at right tackle. Jake McLaughlin was kind of a, you know, a Swiss Army knife and on the offensive side of the ball and also on special teams. So, you know, looking at those guys right there, they'll be hard to replace. And you mentioned a lot of offensive and special teams players. Defensively, are there big, some big stands you guys are losing? On defense, yeah, the same thing. Jackson Myers was probably the best defensive player in the league. I'm biased, obviously, but he had a tremendous year. He tried to be like Mike and... In a lot of respects, he was like Mike. You look up front, Chris Julian had a tremendous year as, as a pass rusher and playing defensive end. You look at the back end, Javon Sewell, slow, you know, nice and steady for us at cornerback. You know, and you also look at the fact you mentioned special teams. Jackson Myers was our long snapper too. So those gentlemen I mentioned, they were all key cogs in helping us get to that 9-3 and three record. And so we really got to work hard to replace them next year. Now that we've tied the knot on that 2023 campaign, what has this offseason looked like in terms of the recruiting side of things for you guys? Well, for us, the offseason is, two, is twofold. You look at two things. You look at development, number one. So currently, our players are knee-deep into preparation physically, working with Coach Majeski on strength development, power development, and also speed and agility. The other portion of that now is supplementing your roster, and that's the recruiting process, and that's why we're here today, National Signing Day. And speaking of signing day, obviously, for those who might not be aware of exactly what signing day is, do you mind giving them a little bit of a debrief on exactly what occurs and what it really is? Signing day is actually a misnomer. It's actually the first day of signing period. And so February 7th, and it's always the first, when, the first Wednesday in February is the first opportunity to sign in Division II football. But our signing period goes all the way through August 1st, actually. So if you don't sign today, that's okay. You can still sign later, just as there's a lot of pomp and circumstance and celebration today, and that's just a tradition thing. So you'd like to be able to sign today if you can, if you know where you're going. And obviously, in preparation for this special edition of the Doug Geyser Show, we talked a little bit back and forth how this signing day might be a little bit different than in years past. Do you mind talking a little bit about why exactly it was different this year? Yeah, the big, the big piece in the puzzle for any level that does not offer full rides, and so we're talking anything but the FBS, the FAFSA information, your need-based money is a big piece of the puzzle. So in order to sign or in order for us to announce anybody to sign on signing day, they either have to ha sign a national letter of intent, which means you're getting some kind of athletic money, or you've got to sign a financial aid agreement. We're able, in most cases, with, our, with the guys we've offered football money to, to sign them today. They're getting significant scholarships. We pretty much know what their package is going to be between athletic and academic money. For those guys who are not receiving football money, now you have a piece of academic merit, which we, we know at this point, but you also have the need-based money. We have no idea on the need-based money because we're not able to access the FAFSA results from the government until now they're telling us probably early March. 
So it's a little, it's a little bit of a monkey wrench in the whole situation this year, and it's, it's kind of a hurdle we've really had to try to navigate. And so when taking a look at signing day for you, what is the day looking like in terms of what's on your schedule for that given day? Well, you wake up bright and early, and there is a time code on the papers we send out. They cannot sign and send them back in until 7 a.m. of signing day. So you get in the office bright and early at 7 a.m., and you're, you used to be monitoring the fax machine. Now it's monitoring your scan on your email, or you can also take a picture of it with your phone, or you can still do old school and do fax. The players have been sent the national letters of intent or the, uh, the financial aid agreements a couple days ago in some cases, and they've reviewed them. Our coaches have gone over with them so you know exactly what the directions are, how to, how to go about it today. We receive those back in. Then we can now announce those players as not only recruits, but signees of the next class at Ashland University. And that's, I guess, has been on a rolling, uh, a rolling list on our website all day. And obviously, even with some of the difficulties we talked about, how are you and the coaching staff feeling about how signing day has turned out? Oh, we're excited. We're excited. In, in a lot of respects, this is a culmination of a year-long process, or sometimes more than a year-long process, of identification of, of uh, recruits and prospects, evaluation, and then, the, uh, then you recruit them. You know, and then you try to court them to come and be a part of your university. So there's been a lot of you know, miles on the road, going to travel and see players, watch them play, whether it's in camps, whether it's in games, home visits, them traveling to you for game day visits or official visits. So there's a lot of time and effort have been put into building that relationship. And to see it come to fruition today is always very rewarding. Well, Coach, thanks so much for sitting down with me to open up today's show. I appreciate it. Thank you. With signing day finally here, it is time to bring in the press to ask a few questions so we can get a deeper insight into how things have gone for the team. We will take a break and join you back here shortly for the question and answer portion of today's episode. Stay tuned. You're watching The Doug Geyser Show right here on AUTV. Welcome back to the Doug Geyser Show. I'm now currently joined by head coach Doug Geyser. It is now time for our question and answer segment in today's studio. So before we get into that, though, give a little bit of a recap on how signing day went. Signing day, it's always a great day of excitement for us. It's kind of a culmination day. It's a combination of national championship and, you know, excitement, adding that next group of players to the roster. And it's kind of a confirmation of all the hard work you've put in. For a lot of these guys, we've known them, been recruiting for over a year. So for, to finally be able to get it to fruition, have them sign and become Eagles, it's very, very rewarding. Well, Coach Geyser, we've got two media members here inside of the studios today. Mm -hmm. It's Ethan Jenkins from the Collegian and Kyle Dorscher from 88.9 WRDL. First off, we'll hear from Ethan Jenkins, a sports reporter from the Collegian. In terms of players that you got locally from around this area, how many of them are there? And can you tell me just a little bit about them? Yeah, we, uh, I can announce four. You know, we talked previously about the matters with the, fia the fiasco with the FAFSA. So there's a couple guys that have not signed as of yet, so I can't divulge their names. I can, I can talk about four. Uh, probably the headliner of the group is a receiver from Shelby, Isaiah Ramsey. Extremely talented, and I think maybe in years gone by, when you didn't have the portal, that I think you probably would have been, you'd been seeing him possibly signing with a MAC team or higher. Uh, tremendously gifted and talented, and the sky's the limit for Isaiah. Right down the road from him, however, we have another receiver from Bucyrus Winford, James uh, Renfuss. And he broke a ton of records at Winford, and we're really excited about that one-two punch with Isaiah and with James. If you look a little closer here, closer to town, we've always got to add some offensive linemen. So Tyler Deloche from Mapleton, tremendous, tremendous player for us. And then we're able, able to add a punter from Ontario, uh, Landon Campbell, as well. So as always, we're going to take care of home first. That's where Ashland starts, and we'll branch out from there. We're excited about all four of those, uh, those local players. And kind of going off of that, how far you guys are branching out, what was the farthest that you guys actually went for somebody in this class? I would probably say uh, Northern, Northern California with Jaden Jimenez, a linebacker, uh, playing upon relationships because recruiting is relationships and building relationships. When we added Donzel Ashley back to the staff during the season, he had a longtime relationship with Jaden and with his family. And it just so happens that Jaden is a heck of a football player and you know, based on that relationship, and after he visited, he wanted to become an Eagle. So I'd say probably California this year. 
Now we'll hear from 88.9 WRDL reporter Kyle Dorschuk. How are you doing, Kyle? Good, how are you? I'm good. Good. The biggest question I have is how big of a role did social media play in your recruiting for this big class? It is playing a, um, an in increasing role every single year. Uh, that's the way that young people communicate nowadays. So we are always, especially Twitter, which I guess I got to call it X now, is that correct? <laughs> We're going to call it that. It, we'll do a ton of research on Twitter. You guys will post their offers, where they've visited, workout stuff on there as well. So we'll research guys tremendously on, on, that, on that medium. But also I know just like we put all our segments from the Doug Geyser show or the radio show on different you know, platforms as well, we'll use that. So I think as you're going through the process of researching guys, it's another vital piece in that research, probably almost as important as the evaluation of actual ability. And going back into the like fit in your team for these recruits, what would you say is the strongest position group that you got from this class? I would say two. I would probably say two at this point. It's just strictly because of numbers. The offensive line group, we can't announce all of them today. We actually have 11 guys in that group coming in. We got, a, we got a, a commit from last night that weren't able to get the papers done for, and the defensive tackle group. We signed seven guys in that group as well. And so um, we want to keep stacking offensive linemen for obvious reasons, for depth, because it's a very, you know, it can be a very high injury uh, position, but also for competition. And then on the defensive tackle position, we graduate four guys next year. And so we got to have you know, guys ready to go. We don't want to have to play freshmen in 2025. If, you know, unless they're good enough. So if we continue to build on both those classes, so we are playing from a position of strength and competition at that point. So I'd say the O-line and the D-line in this class. And then last one here for you, Coach. You were hired as head coach just before signing day last year. Mm -hmm. Now you get that whole year. What has the process looked like in terms of differences between last year and now this year in your role? Uh, more than anything else, probably the biggest difference is last year I was wearing two hats. I was wearing the hat of Doug Geyser, the assistant. So. In last year's class, there's a number of those gentlemen I recruited personally as coach geyser, not head coach geyser. So this year's class taking more of an overriding view of the whole, you know, the whole aspect of that. I didn't have to worry about a specific area. I could concentrate on specific players, whether I had to go across the state or out of state. It kind of freed me up to do that. So it was a little weird in that respect where you're not building the personal relationships for over a year. But it was also nice to kind of a new, a new challenge as I worked in more of an overarching role. Coach, that is all for today's portion of the question and answer segment of today's special edition of the Doug Geyser Show. A special thank you to all the local media members who made it out today to join our crew here in the center of the art studio. Next up, we'll be joined by Eagle Recruiting Coordinator and Safeties Coach Dominic Orsini to discuss the off-season recruitment process, focal points on the incoming class, and much, much more. Stay tuned right here on AUTV. Welcome back to the Doug Geyser Show. I'm currently joined by head coach Doug Geyser and recruiting coordinator and safeties coach Dominic Orsini. First off, guys, thanks so much for joining me. Absolutely. Thank you. Of course. So to hop straight into things, how has this offseason gone for you guys in terms of recruiting? It's gone really well. Um, you know, I think we, we were able to, to really come together as a staff this offseason and, and really target um, all the great talent in Ohio and beyond the state of Ohio to, to put together a really good class this year. And obviously talking about kind of the state of Ohio and the areas of scouting you guys have hit, yeah. has there been a focal point? Has it been local? Has it been beyond? What's it kind of looking like for you guys? Yeah, absolutely. So Ashland football, we're, all, we're always going to stick to our roots, right, which is dominating the, the great state of Ohio. Um, but this year we kind of expanded outside of the, the state of Ohio um, into bordering states like Michigan, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, and Indiana. And, um, you know, you look at some of the guys that we brought in this year, you know, we got Sam Okula out of the Detroit area in Michigan. Um, and even beyond those bordering states, you know, we got a, a huge recruit out of California, Jaden Jimenez, 
um, you know, linebacker out of there in North Cal. And then we went even all the way down to Florida this year and, and getting Damian Bloomfield, a big time D tackle for us. So this year, um, you know, was the first year we really went out of the state of Ohio to, to target some of these top prospects for us. And, you know, getting a handful of them this year was a good first step in the right direction. And when you take a look at character and what you're looking for in terms of personalities on the recruiting side of things, when you guys go to these events and when you guys are watching film, what are you guys looking for in terms of that? Yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of things. Yeah, I, the, probably the most important thing, there's three questions we ask of all recruits when they come in. Number one, do they love football? Number two, are they a good teammate? And number three, can we trust them? So those, those three things character-wise encompass a lot as far as accountability and, and ability in there. and. Uh, those, are, those will kind of be the backbone of anybody we look at with the intangibles. Yeah. And when you guys kind of take a look at what you guys addressed this offseason, was there any specific position groups or sides of the ball you guys had to address specifically? Yeah, so, you know, defensive, you know, wise speaking, uh, you know, our secondary is getting older and older. So this was a big class to, to kind of get a, a group of really talented incoming freshmen, you know, so in a year or two, these guys have come in, developed a little bit within the system and can kind of take over in a year or two. So I think we met needs in the defensive back room, you know, at a, at a really high standard there. Um, D tackle, same type of thing. You know, we got a lot of great D tackles and D linemen right now, but we're going to graduate a lot of those guys after this year. So bringing in a strong interior, you know, D-line class was huge for us, met those needs. Um, you know, you lose Jackson Myers, top middle linebacker. Uh, we did a really good job last year in recruiting to make sure we got guys for this year, but went out and still got two really good linebackers this year for us. Um, you know, and offensive-wise, I know receivers, you know, we lost uh, Des, Des Libertis and, and got two really good guys in Isaiah Ramsey and Chris Brown, you know, in this receiving class. Um, and I don't know, anywhere else in, on the offensive side? In, in a lot of respects, it, we had some needs. You want to replace guys that you graduate. So, you know, Dom mentioned Des Libertas. You can't replace a Des Libertas, but you, you, want, you need to recruit some receivers. You think I have a chance. Absolutely. Uh, also, the same thing at linebacker. You can't replace a Jackson Myers, but you want to recruit guys you think might have a chance to develop, to be, you know, good serviceable players for us. Absolutely. And then beyond that, it's almost kind of, I almost equate it to a meat and potatoes class. You know, just kind of keep about your knitting, so to speak, and keep replenishing the coffers on the offensive line and the defensive line so you can withstand injuries from year to year, any unforeseen circumstances that might happen. And oh, and oh by the way, you look at the tailback room, we graduated three. So we got to replenish that room as well. When we, we, like, we like the gentleman we signed in that class as well. And when it comes to kind of like the recruiting process and for a coaching staff, do you guys go back and forth with one another on different recruits? Or when you're looking at position groups, how do you guys talk as a coaching staff in terms of addressing these needs? Yeah, so I think that really goes back to uh, the springtime. You know, once Coach Geyser got the job last year, the first thing we did as a staff was sit down together and kind of go through every position on the football field. And from there, we kind of got an idea of what that position coach is really looking for, right? Those are the guys coaching those guys. You know, those are the guys that have those answers of, hey, I want a guy with great hips or a guy with a really good takeoff. So we were able to go through each position and kind of have an idea for each recruiting area coach that, you know, these are the guys in my area. This is what I'm looking for in each position. So we were able to have a better mindset of what the whole staff was really looking for in each position. And then really throughout the, the summer into the fall season and after, um, those recruiting area guys will really target all the top prospects in their area, show them to the position coaches. Those position coaches will then put them on the big board, grade them, and then after that, the coordinators will come in, kind of grade them themselves. Then you talk about who are the, the guys that you really want to offer on staff. And then once you kind of target those guys that you want to send offers out to, um, the head guy right here, he signs off on all of them. So he's kind of the last step, but it's a really good healthy process that we have with a lot of great communication that goes on in between. And that step process between you two, how do you guys work together in terms of the recruiting side of things? Yeah, so I would say, like, in addition to us two, the coordinators, you know, Tom Stacy and Tim Rose are our big voices in that too, obviously. So we all four kind of sit down and, and kind of just decide, you know, if there's a, you know, two recruits kind of 50 50, where do we want to, which guy do we want to go with and why? So I do a little bit, mostly him and the coordinators are the ones making the big decisions there. And obviously, <laughs> earlier on in the episode, we talked about, Coach, Coach Guys really talked a little about how this year has been way different in terms of how the signing day has gone due to some variety of different issues. Do you guys mind highlighting those? 
Yeah, so I think the big thing this year was the, the delay in the FAFSA information, right? So um, Division Two, you know, you can stack all that stuff together. Division One, a scholarship's full or nothing, right? Division Two, we can break up our scholarships. So kind of set us back a little bit in terms of packaging guys together. But, I mean, you go on our website, social media today, I mean, we still were able to sign a, a very, very talented class right now. Um, and a few guys are still out there waiting for some of that information to come through. Um, but we were able to work with admissions, financial aid, um, to you know, as a whole university to really make sure that this process went as smooth as possible for us. And, and with all the headaches that we had this year, I think we came out um, in a really good way. Yeah, I think I think Coach Orsini's done a great job building relationships across campus with admissions, with financial aid. So when you have a blip in the road like this, yeah, you just you, you know grab your heads together. Let's talk this thing through. How can we make this work? And the biggest factor in the whole deal here is Ashland sells itself. There's a lot to sell here academically, athletically, socially. And so there were a number of gentlemen that wanted to be here. They know they want to be here, and they're going to figure out the, the financial piece at some point. But at base, they see themselves here growing into Ashland Eagles and being the next group on the field. So let's get that part out of the way. We'll figure out the other part once, once the government complies. And obviously, Coach Orsini, we've got to talk a little about the safeties. When you were looking at high schoolers this year in terms of the recruiting side of things, what are you guys looking for from that defensive back room? Yeah, so there's obviously a ton of you know different traits you're looking for. But the two that really come to my mind and Coach Ashley's mind is, you know, one, they got to be physical, you know, especially in the safety position, coming down, filling the run, got to have physicality at this level. And then number two, guys who go out and simply just make plays, you know. Defensive, uh, back-wise nowadays, you get so much ball in the air. You know, can that guy – adjust with the ball in the air? Can he make a PBU or can he make a pick? You know, those are big things today that are hard to find. So really having the physicality and the big play, um, you know, mentality out there are, are two really big things that you need as a DB to come and, and be successful at this level. Well, Coach Rossini, I appreciate you sitting down and good luck moving Absolutely. forward in the recruiting process. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Of course. When we return, we'll be joined by associate head coach and offensive line coach Jim Cordell to discuss the offensive recruiting goals, some of the incoming freshmen, and the offense we will see, and much, much more. Stay tuned right here on AUTV. Welcome back to the Doug Geyser Show. Now we're joined alongside Coach Jim Cordell. Coach Cordell, this past season, the offense truly did thrive. When all is said and done, what do you guys have in terms of takeaways? From, from this last year of offense, we got a really good quarterback. And uh, he can sling the rock. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a really good player. He helped, you know, he helped manage the offensive line, um, made us look good. And uh, a lot of pieces, you know, a lot of pieces um, around them. You know, we got some young running backs that we feel really good about, some things like that. But, uh, yeah, quarterback is the guy. When taking a look at the offense in terms of the recruiting side of things this offseason, obviously a focus has got to be on the offensive line. What did you guys uh, end up out with here on the signing day? Yeah, I'm coming up on a year uh, at Ashland. And uh, when I got here, I was all excited to get, you know, right in the spring ball. Uh, but there were many spring practices. We had uh, six, six offensive linemen practicing last year. So um, to be able to, to actually have some depth now, feel good about the depth that we have uh, going into the fall, feel pretty good about that. We've got, uh, we, we signed eight guys, uh, still working on, on some other guys, but Caden Benton, Andrew Heisler, Nico Trasic, Andrew Bowden, Caden Bender, Aiden Cantu, James Barnes, uh, Kale Chason, Chason, he's from uh, Louisiana, originally from Louisiana, um, and we're working on some other guys, you know, so we'll have some depth and we'll, we'll continue to build on, you know, we had a good class last year that, that, that is looking for, you know, looking for those guys to have a big spring as well, but uh, can feel pretty good about that. And, and uh, you know, each guy's got, got a lot of, you know, got a lot of uh, talents and, uh, you know, Benton's a, a, a long dude that, you know, it's, he weighed in at 240, so we've got some we've got some uh, work to. But you know, they'll develop and and uh, Beef Heisler, um, 
you know, Nico, just tough, nasty, uh, Andrew Bowden, those guys, those are big bodies, okay? Uh, they're big bodies, um, and that's what we're trying to do. And, you know, we, for all these guys down through, not all of them are, are huge, but they're, they're, they're good players, and uh, look forward to having them in a the room. And obviously, you guys both bleed offensive line mentality. So when you take a look at what you guys were looking for in terms of the offensive line, was there any specific characteristics you guys are trying to hone in on? Well, I, I look at, uh, you know, it's, it's really universal positionally, you know, what Coach talked about earlier, you know, do they love football, all, the, all that good stuff. So, so those, are, those are requirements, number one, you know. And then obviously, we, we do want to try to find some big guys that, uh, you know, that have some of those tangibles, um, Tangibly, are you know how how big are they? What's their length? Can they bend? Do they have good twitch? So those are those are things that you know we look for specifically with O line as well. But you know, um, at the end of the day, they got to love it and and they got to love getting down and dirty and and moving guys around. Yeah, there's the other portion of it too. As you look at it, are the feet. Most people just, they think offensive line, they think size, but there's a whole lot more that goes into it than just that. As Coach mentioned, you got to have the ability to bend. Okay, and that's, that's huge. You gotta have a quick twitch. You gotta be able to move and move explosively. You gotta be able to move your feet. And then the other thing that's, you know, can be overlooked at times, there needs to be a certain level of toughness too, whether it's mental or physical toughness, because playing offensive line is a grind. And there are many times, even in practice, you're off in the corner of the field there and you're just practicing for about an hour and a half by yourself. So you gotta love the process. You gotta have toughness to work through any kind of nicks and, and bruises you might have through the season, all for the team. And it's, it's a very special person to be able to do that. And that's something you guys highlighted a lot this season, at least, in terms of your offensive line game banged up numerous times. Mm -hmm. How important is it to be able to have that depth now in terms of the recruiting class? Yeah, I mean, I can uh, have, you know, obviously you go into a game and you, and you, um, you know, I, last year it was just like, okay, we got to hang on. You know, we can't have anybody go down. Um, so now it'll be, a, all right, we'll, we'll have some guys with depth. Not that we want to, we certainly don't want anybody to get injured, but, uh, We'll, we'll feel good about, okay, we've got good depth, and, and we even like to get to it. You know, I know these guys are young still as they go through and develop, you know, I mean, playing multiple guys at a position. You know, that's, I think that's the ultimate goal um, as we build this class. It was a good class and, and, and look, you know, already turned to page of 25, but get to the point where we can play a couple guys at a position. And how is it looking in terms of the coaching staff when you guys take a look back at this past year and how you guys met and what you guys addressed and then now shifting gears to potentially next year's recruiting class? Offensively, what are you guys looking at? Well, for as far as the staff working together, what you're yeah. talking about, I was really happy with the, the way the offensive staff came together. And you get uh, myself and Coach Stacy, we worked together for almost 30 years, off and on for 30 some years. So there was a synergy already there. He knows him, or he knows myself, I know him. We know what our expectations and kind of what we want to get accomplished. Bringing in somebody like Jim, who has a totally different perspective, where he's, where he's coming from, how he's been taught, and the things he believes in, was actually really healthy for the staff. We hadn't had a turnover like that in a long, long time, and it, was, it just took time to assimilate everybody together. Not to mention you add in really youngsters that, you know, go-getters such as an Evan Berberian and A.J. Nikolai, who are also very, you know, they, all they want to do is go out there and coach. And they love the game, and they're passionate about what they're doing. So throwing all those bodies and those people in a staff room, it takes a little bit of time to get everybody on the same page with what we're trying to accomplish. Not to mention you're breaking a new quarterback as well during that and you know, somebody like Des Liberta. So it took a little bit initially, I thought, at the beginning of the season for us to get to that point. But by the end of the season, last half of the season, the, the progress was marked. And Coach Cordell, obviously it was your first full year now fully under your belt with the Eagles. When you take a look at next year, what are your expectations looking like? Just to continue to build. Uh, this is, um, it was, like Coach said, we started out a little slow, but uh, we've got a lot of positive momentum going in, into this, this season. Uh, obviously have, have our goals in place and are going to start, you know, we're already the, with the off season. The guys are working really hard and uh, look, to, look to build on this class that we signed and, and yeah, get already pretty quickly, you know, you, you get emails from coaches, hey, here's my, here's my 25 guy and, and uh, just look to continue to build. Well, Coach Coral, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. That was all that we have with Coach Coral. Thanks so much for jo joining us during this busy time. Now it's time to wrap the show with Coach Geyser as we take a look at the current season standings and the rest of the schedule. Coach will join us after these brief messages. You're watching The Doug Geyser Show on AUTV.
Welcome back to the Doug Geyser Show, right here on AUTV. Coach, it's time to wrap up our special edition of today's episode of the Doug Geyser Show. It's been a pleasure to be able to sit down with you here today and discuss a variety of different things. So when we shift gears now, taking a look at the spring, how are things looking for you guys? Today is the culmination of, of uh, recruiting for our incoming class. That's exciting for us. After that, we'll get the workout out to them here on, on Monday morning. They're ready to start their 12-week cycle. For the guys on campus, we'll continue the off-season development. We'll test here in about three weeks, end of February, early March. Let them go on spring break. When they come back, we're starting for spring practice already for a six-week phase. That'll culminate on Saturday, April 20th with our spring games. We're excited to see the, you know, the young guys especially coming in with how they've changed their bodies and see the carryover potentially to the field. And now as we shift gears to the 2024 campaign, we fortunately do have a look at the early schedule in terms of what you'll be expecting. On paper, are there any given matchups that stand out to you guys? I think as, as you look forward at you know, next year's schedule, last year's past year was very challenging with the first five. You now add Finley to that mix, and it is one of the most challenging starts to a you know, season schedule I think they've had in AU history. So you start with the two nationally ranked teams, IUP and Ferris, big challenges as we know. But there was a reason that guys come to Ashland was to play in those games like that. And then you got to switch gears and be ready for a rival game. The Traveling Trophy, very storied, uh, long rivalry with Hillsdale. We got to go to their place this year. They're going to want revenge. And then the next three weeks, you're starting with the only other teams in the GMAC that have won the GMAC since it came into existence. You got Tiffin, you got ODU, and you got Finley in addition to us. So we got to be firing on all cylinders coming right out of the shoot, or we're going to get embarrassed. And as you wrap up today's show, are there any final thoughts out there for the audience? Hey, I, I want to say a very special thanks to the crew here for you know working with the Doug Geyser Show my first year this past year and making the job very easy for me and the transition very easy. I also want to thank our fans. Uh, we love playing at Jack Miller Stadium. We love the support we get on the road. It's invaluable as a 12th man, and I probably don't say it enough, but a special thanks to the fans of the Eagles. You really helped us have success this season. Well, Coach, thanks so much for joining us on this busy day of signing day. Thank you. That was today's special edition episode of the Doug Geyser Show. With signing day now complete, the team now looks to shift gears in preparation for the spring season and practices to ramp up soon. I'm Kate Krakus, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Doug Geyser Show right here on AUTV.